New York State said this week it will appeal a court ruling that has halted work on a network of snowmobile trails in the Adirondacks. Last month, an appeals court sided with Protect the Adirondacks, an environmental group that has argued that building these trails will cut too many trees in the Adirondack Park. The state has been looking for several years now to build the community connector trails to link up to other snowmobile trails in the park, and many hope at the same time being a big economic boost to the small rural communities nearby. Our colleague Matt Ryan with New York Now takes a look at this court battle that has dragged on for years and what it's all about. What is a tree? We don't mean to get all existential on you, but it's at the very heart of a lawsuit in the Adirondacks. Going way back to the end of the George Pataki administration, the Department of Environmental Conservation and Office of Parks and Recreation released the snowmobile plan for the Adirondack Park in 2006. Included in this final environmental impact statement was a proposal for the establishment of community connector trails. The thought was to link up a series of towns for snowmobilers with a chance for the areas to gain some economic benefit. The plan was touted as staying consistent with Article 14 of the state's constitution, better known as the Forever Wild Clause. One environmental advocacy group, though, didn't see it that way. You know, this is what that trail looked like. You know, it was an intact forest. That's what the trail looked like. It had a series of larger trees, it had a series of smaller trees, and it had a lot of ground cover. Tons of witch hobble, ferns, trillium on the understory. All of that is then obliterated as they build the trail. And you can see when we get back up here, the understory has been completely changed. They put down straw and all of this grass. There's no grass in the forest. There's no grass up here. But all of this grass has been allowed to grow because they've completely changed this forest corridor into a long grassy strip. They've poked holes in the canopy, which allows the sun to come in. So it's a fundamental change of the forest character. Peter Bauer is the executive director of Protect the Adirondacks. The organization brought a lawsuit against the state regarding the snowmobile plan back in 2013. They had two arguments. One, the roughly 12 foot wide trails violated the state land master plan. And two, the number of trees being cut down exceeded what is allowed under Article 14. Fast forward to 2017. After a trial, a state Supreme Court judge in Albany dismissed both aspects of the lawsuit, saying the community connector trails, quote, are no more out of harmony with forest lands in their wild state than the foot, horse, and bicycle trails throughout the preserve, unquote. Protect the Adirondacks appealed the decision and on July 3rd of this year received better news. While an appellate court agreed with the 2017 decision that the construction of the trails did not violate the Constitution, they sided with the environmental group that too many trees would be cut down in what ended up as a four to one decision. Which gets us back to our original question, what is a tree? Or maybe better yet, what is timber? A clause in Article 14 says timber shall not be sold, removed, or destroyed. The DEC and its snowmobile plan counted timber as three inches or greater in diameter at breast height. If that's the case, the agency estimated around 6,100 trees would be removed. We have a big, large diameter tree here, about 10 inches in diameter. You have a large diameter tree here, about 13 inches in diameter. But then you've got small tree, small tree, small tree. Protect the Adirondacks argued that wasn't a fair way to judge what's in the forest preserve. So after the cutting and grading of the initial trails began earlier this decade, Peter Bauer went out and documented the aftermath by snapping thousands and thousands of photographs. 
Our argument is that there are lots of trees of smaller diameter that have an important ecologic function, important forest ecology function that also need to be counted. So we documented trees of all sizes because many trees that are one or inch or two inches in diameter, they could be 40, 50 feet, 60 feet tall, and they could be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old or older. And we were able to document a number of cases where that was true. This is the forest of the future, and a lot of these trees, when you actually count the rings, and you see how tight the rings are, they could be a small diameter tree that's 50, 60, 75, 100 years old. So, a tree that has, is 100 years old is an important tree in the history of the forest preserve because the whole purpose of the forest preserve is to allow wild nature. If you count the smaller trees as Protect the Adirondacks is doing, they say the number being eliminated balloons to 25,000. It was a compelling enough argument that in 2016, an appellate court judge slapped an injunction on any future cutting. So now we're at a disturbed area of over 20 feet. On a blistering hot summer day, Bauer, along with his dog Clover, took us out to three different sections of the trail. Here in Newcomb, we saw a portion of the finished trail, a few miles down the road with the black flies nipping at every area of exposed skin. We saw a section that was cut, but not graded. Finally, we saw where the cutting stopped when the injunction was put in place. Bauer says this was a good way of seeing what exactly the forest is losing when one of the snowmobile trails is being created. So this is very illustrative of what the forest looks like before they even start cutting. And it won't take very long to follow their line. Right here is the beginning. And it's not going to take very long where you can't even see me. This is an intact forest, uncut filled with big trees and little trees. Bauer says the injunction left the DEC design trail here in the central Adirondacks about four miles short of completion. The New York State Snowmobiling Association, as you would imagine, was not happy with the mid-level court's recent decision. But the announcement itself well, it was a little bit surprising and of course we're very disappointed in the decision. Uh, the court took a um, an approach that we really didn't anticipate them taking, uh, basically changing the definition of timber, uh, one that had been established in case law several times in the past. Peter Bauer points out there is already an extensive and popular network of trails in the Tug Hill Plateau and Old Forge, where thanks to lake effect snow, the season is long and popular with snowmobilers. But Dominic Jack Angelo says there is a missed opportunity for riders in the eastern part of the park. I think if the connections are made, uh, there's a new snowmobile experience. The folks from the Albany area, instead of heading over on the, on the throughway over to Tug Hill, will head straight up the Northway, park at uh, North Hudson, where the state has now invested millions in a campground, and drop their sleds there and head over to Newcomb and over to Indian Lake and then take the long loop back and come back up Scroon Lake and, and end up back there. A, a different experience. We don't need to build, build trails that have enormous, that are inflicting enormous environmental damage and actually provide very little marginal economic benefit. Most of these trails, the state will never recoup the investment. You know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars to build these trails, you'll never see economic activity that comes anywhere close to repaying that. Next stop could be New York's highest court, where maybe we'll get a better definition of what exactly constitutes a tree.